Hello friends, welcome to AI Flux. So Meta just released Llama 2 and they did it on purpose in an actually open source way this time. The biggest giveaway of this is there's actually a download button and there's a lot to unpack here, so let's get into it. So it's been four months since the first iteration of Llama was launched and then leaked and then iterated by everyone in the open source LLM community. I think some would say this was sort of the first big um, breaking point in terms of people doing a ton of incredible work outside of just these big companies like OpenAI, Meta, and Microsoft. At a high level, the release involves a partnership with Microsoft, which is kind of interesting. It's available for research and commercial use with dedicated licenses. The release includes pre-trained and fine-tuned models, so it's not just one version of Llama. There's actually um, a 7B, 13B, and 70B version. It's pre-trained on about 40% more data than Llama 1, and this also improves some architectural improvements. What's also interesting is Meta's claiming this model is safer and higher quality and uses supervised fine tuning and RLHF, which is kind of cool. And for whatever reason, they mentioned safety a lot about this model. There are also some really cool ways we can try it right now, and we'll get into that just a bit later. So before we get into too many of the details, I think it's important to note that there are a lot of conflicting opinions on how performant this model is. There are a lot of different benchmarks, and coding benchmarks are giving us kind of the best insight so far. So for now, the best guess is, at least from what some researchers on Twitter are saying, I'm mostly going off of some of the rhetoric that Jim Pham has put together. Uh, he's at Twitter, uh, at Dr. Jim Pham. And his claim is that it's the 70B version of Llama 2 is pretty close to GPT 3.5 in terms of reasoning tasks, but there's much more of a performance gap in coding benchmarks. It's better than Google's Palm 540B in most benchmarks, but for now, at least in its raw form, it appears to be quite a bit behind GPT-4 and Palm 2L. And what I think is interesting is even as a researcher, he actually also said that uh, he was surprised by how many large claims of safety um, were present in this. My take on that is uh, this is probably a, a very cautious uh, reaction to a lot of the recent uh, posturing on Capitol Hill, not only just from Adobe and Sam Altman, but from even companies like Stability that are trying to define how these models are trained, how powerful they really are, um, and basically carefully you know, state what their capabilities are, but be careful to not overstate them uh, and then spook regulators who we all know can barely use a calculator. So in short, Llama 2 is a continuation of the Llama formula with substantial technical expansion in terms of data quality, training techniques, capabilities, evaluation, safety training, and responsible releases, which it's funny to me how Meta has basically invented a lot of words to make AI safety even harder to understand. So it's cool that like the regulatory capture is having this effect even with uh, academic things. The technical research paper includes substantial details on all these areas. The, in the big picture, this is a big step forward for the entire LLM ecosystem, which really, in my opinion, was spurred by the first leak of Llama. And of course, you know, we can go back and forth endlessly as to whether Meta really wanted this to be released that way. However, they've clearly learned from their mistakes and are now fully embracing open source approaches to AI. So the base model seems really strong. I've played around with this quite a bit. The fine-tuned chat models seem about on the same level as ChatGPT. I would say more like leaning towards GPT 3.5. I've mostly been using the uh, the hosted chat API on Replicate, which is all on A16Z infrastructure. And there's also a model playground at llama2.ai. Uh, that's most of what I've done so far. I have yet to really fine tune this, but so far the experience has been very positive. So I did a quick read of the paper. So here's what I think you need to know. My list you know, here mostly focuses on the model itself and then sort of some analyses of what this might mean for like the next three to four months. Because for me, like it, it's nuts that Llama 1 only came out four months ago. Like It seems like that was a year ago in terms of how quickly things have progressed. So what is the model? So, so Meta is releasing, again, multiple models with varying base sizes. So between 7 and 70 billion. And the chat variant also has the same sizes. But it's important to note that uh, the base model and the chat base model are actually separate. Again, they increased the pre-training size of the corpus by 40%. Um, most notably doubling the context length. So the, the length of text it can actually understand and try to infer on has doubled. And uh, they're really excited about this, this new approach they call grouped query attention. The costs are also kind of interesting. So the budget and commitment that Meta made probably was around 25 million. 
which is table stakes generally for a model of this size. However, this is pretty incredible because we know, generally speaking, how much it might have cost for ChatGPT to be trained, which was in the hundreds of millions of dollars. And uh, knowing that Meta has so much spare cash, 25 million for this next open source model is actually kind of a bargain. And what I do think is interesting is there's some really curious artifacts with this model. So. ChatGPT at a more technical kind of deeper level relies on this idea of a reward model. And you can see this in some of the data sets that have been released for ChatGPT 3. And basically what this means is, you know, when, this is why when you prompt ChatGPT and you kind of hold a carrot in front of it, it will do things faster or it will try to try you know, harder or be more accurate. We know it's using RLHF. Um, which stands for reinforcement learning from human feedback, which is kind of interesting. And something that I think is kind of curious here is at least in the paper, there wasn't a lot of focus on um, code, math, or reasoning. I'm sure eventually there will be a fine tune of this that will only focus on that. But for now, um, they do reference Starcoder and um, human eval in terms of their Python capabilities uh, relative to Llama 2. But other than that, they were very, uh, they were not willing to go into too much detail there. They do mention reward models later on. They mostly talk about trade-offs that have been identified in Anthropic's work. Mostly that if you uh, lean too far into kind of a reward-based model, you end up with a lot of hallucination. Now, what I thought was curious, and like, again, they mentioned AI safety a ton in this paper, and they mentioned um, data controls. Basically, what they mean by this is having a better supply chain for the training data so you can have reproducible results and basically show that the model doesn't hallucinate and tell you wild things about history or those kinds of things. This was the first time that I'd seen RLHF mentioned in an AI safety context. So basically saying that uh, the model can tell when you're telling it it's wrong, but not overreact to your reaction. And uh, the other curious thing was they mentioned, again, safety a ton. I mean, they refer to this as like safety and harm evals. So they say, um, you know, for very, very long safety evals, almost half the paper, the detailed context installation, RLHF, are explicitly for safety purposes. So this is the Hugging Face page. Obviously, there are a lot of models here. And, and I also think it's cool that Meta is actually embracing kind of the, the Hugging Face model here, which again is open source, uh, but also is sort of a good faith interpretation of their move to open source because Meta in the past has not been very open to this. And it's really ironic because Hugging Face is predominantly run on Amazon infrastructure. And the irony of Amazon is at least as a technical org, they're very against open source. So there are a ton of models here. Again, there is the, the Llama based model and then the Llama chat model. And what's cool is there actually are also already endorsed fine tunes from the bloke. Um, he's a great guy to follow on Twitter. And what's really cool is there are actually some GGML fine tunes of Llama already. So it, this took weeks prior when Llama initially leaked. And now that you can see that the benefit of this all being open source, because within hours of the release of Llama 2, people have already fine tuned these to run on Apple Silicon. And if you'd like, um, we're probably gonna try to do a video running this on Apple Silicon, but um, let us know in the comments if you really wanna see that. So let's see what you can run on this right now. I've created a prompt in Replicate. Um, I'm gonna see how this works. The last time I've seen writing output this good or prose output this good was with Falcon 40B. But let's try this. So I've modified the default prompt just to know that we're not gonna blow this out of the water. My prompt is write a story in the style of Douglas Adams. The story should be about a trip to the planet Venus in 2083 to see the beautiful scenery and robots after a pit stop to Elon's Mars colony. So temperature is basically a new way that Meta is describing randomness of outputs. There are semantic choices of all these parameters. It's boring, but it's interesting because Clearly, they're trying to make the the knobs you have to turn to define output, I think, sound way less dystopian. And they're trying to make it sound like in a way where you can tweak these and they, are, they result in degrees of safety. All right, so here we go. And it looks like this is running on an NVIDIA A140 gig GPU, so nothing wild. And here's what we got. Sure thing. Here's a story in the style of Douglas Adams about a trip to Venus in 2083. In the year 2083, humanity had finally figured out how to travel to other planets. Well, not exactly figured out as much as built a bunch of crazy technology that might possibly work. But hey, who needs safety and stability when you're exploring the cosmos? Which is funny given that 
this model is supposed to be more safe. Our protagonist, a hapless but lovable idiot named Dave, always dreamed of visiting the planet Venus. Why, you ask? Well, because it's a beautiful place, of course. The scenery is stunning, the atmosphere is toxic, that's good, that's scientifically accurate, and the robots are just the right amount of murderous. What more could you want in a vacation? So let's see, okay, so they got it. Uh, they set off for Mars, where they would make a pit stop to Elon's Mars colony before heading to Venus. They approached Mars, Dave couldn't help but feel a sense of awe at the red planet's towering mountains and endless valleys, but then he remembered that he was on a tight budget and had to share a room with Bender. Okay, that's interesting, so it, included as Futurama character in a fictitious Douglas Adams story about going to Elon Musk's Mars colony. Hey Bender, can you please not snore so loudly? Dave begged, covering his ears. Snore me, pa. Huh? I'm not snoring, I'm just recharging my batteries. Once they arrived at the Mars colony, uh, obviously we only have a context length of 500 here, but that was pretty good. Uh, I'll, I'll post the entire thing in the description so you guys can read it, but this is, this is awesome. I can't wait to try the GGML fine tunes of this. I actually didn't know they were in existence until I made this video. But yeah, incredible that Meta is definitely embracing open source and has realized that this is really the way to go. I think the notion of a default fine tune, I think the notion of these chat models is also really cool. Obviously, like this is not a blazingly new concept, but the idea of having a raw base model and then sort of the next 20% done, if you wanted to make this a cool chat um, model, I think it's really cool. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe. It helps us out a ton. We hope you learned something and we'll see you in the next video.